So we just put some sealer bonding primer on here all around. This is what we use. Look at this little toilet. <laughs> so this is for this little girl's bathroom. <laughs> Uh, this is what we used. Valspar Bonding Primer Sealer. Sandable, all that fun stuff. Let's go in and take a look at the other bag. Same thing. What grit sandpaper is that? Uh, I believe it's a... Nobody knows. It's a 220. Um, but it's, I think this is a little bit different. A little bit... Super different. fine 220? Yeah, I mean, it's not as... Is that your dress? Yeah. Wow. It's so cool. pretty. As usual, make sure that you have equal parts, no matter how big or how small the piece is that you're doing a pour on. Whether you're measuring it in ounces or by the weight or by marks on a cup, doesn't matter what it is as long as it's exactly equal. This is the sink we're about to do. We masked off all the parts that we don't want any paint or any resin or any anything on including the bottom of a mirror because yeah so about to do this so now that you have your resin mixed evenly and thoroughly separate your resin into um different cuts that you want to mix colors into what's wrong that's not a lot no i'll make some more when you're using acrylic paint it doesn't take a lot at all a dabble do ya so to speak
When you're mixing this up, you're going to see bubbles. I don't know if you can see. Don't worry about that. It's just air from mixing the two parts into each other. When you use a heat gun, it disperses the air bubbles because it um, kind of melts the resin just a little bit. It liquefies it, which makes it easier to move around as well as easier for the bubbles to escape the surface of the resin. That's your science tip for the day. When you're mixing your resin, scrape the sides, scrape the bottom, and scrape your stir stick. This will ensure you don't get any weak spots in your resin. Gold, Rust-Oleum, Gold Metallic. It's the good stuff. When you use uh, this little thing, you can make bigger puddles. You can drag it out with the point. With the, these are like wooden shish kebab sticks. How do you want me to do this? Just, just like, like there, and just kind of, just kind of make it a puddle, and just kind of drag it out. Yeah, and then just blow on it, just like that. I like how this looks. She's gonna like like parts like this where it's like deep to faint. Yeah, that's that's what I like because when you pour it over it, then it goes over that pink. Pour the white over the pink? No, just do it and then you blow it and then it goes over some parts. Gotcha, I don't know if I'll put that one in. I'm gonna put this down. So client also wanted gold leaf, therefore we are adding gold leaf. It's basically gold that's pounded down into teeny tiny, itty bitty flat sheets. They're super delicate and flimsy, but they look great. Sometimes you have to unfold gold leaf unless you get the sheets, which is cool, but it wouldn't look very natural. So we got like just chunks, but you can't just put the chunks in because it, it'll leave too much texture. It'll stick out, so you have to unfold it very delicately.
these are wasted, right? Well, they're spent. So here's the first one. What about um, the resin cups? This is just clear, right? We can still use this. Mm -hmm. And the one, the last one, the one with the cup, the stick in it that I just used, it's uh, clear. I, yeah. So here's the first thing. Pink marble with gold leaf. When you do this, don't forget to get the edges. Even if they're not textured beveled edges like this, it's super important to continue your design all the way over gives it a better, more natural look. Better, more natural. Betterer, more naturaler. So we're gonna let this set and then we're gonna come back in and do a clear coat Miana. Now we gotta go do the other bathroom. This one, same as the last one, equal parts, mixed thoroughly, script sides, the bottom, and also the stick to make sure you get as much as you can off because equality is important. Together and equal. So if you've watched any of my videos before, you've heard me say a thousand million times, the reason why it's important to have equal parts is because if you have too much resin, it will never set. You'll have a gooey mess forever. And if you have too much hardener, your working time will be greatly reduced depending on how much extra hardener you put in. It's also important to mix everything together thoroughly because if you don't, you'll end up with like spots of more resin or spots of more hardener and it'll be a weak spot in the resin. So if it all sets hard, but you have a weak spot, the weak spot will be gooey. So you'll have to scrape it up, sand it down and do at, at the very least a top coat. So in the interest of saving time, and money. Just mix it thoroughly the first time. Since a client wants pink and white and gold marble-ish look, that's what we're going to give her. So what we do is a clear coat in sporadic areas and then we go over. All right, pro tip. When you buy resin, um, do what we did not do today and check your hardener because it will yellow over time. And this is what it looks like when your hardener yellows. This what? is what it should look like. This is just the resin parts, part A, it's part B. They should be the same color. But it's not that like detrimental if they're not the exact same color. Um, especially because we use a lot of tints in our artwork countertops so it's not that big a deal but it could be if it was just like if we did an airbrush piece and did a clear coat over it it would be a problem
So what Jeff is doing right now is marbling out the white that we added on top of the clear. The reason why we do the white on top of the clear is so that you um, get the depth of the white laying over. take you guys on a little ride so you can see more up close of what it looks like when you lay you, there's just no way to get a good shot of resin mm -mm. It's too shiny all right I don't know if you can see it but see the shadow over that line that's what happens when nope it's not focusing Since we can't tilt this, we um, use a roller. That the lines aren't as harsh we just got this roller from michael's it was like three dollars this is the cheapest foam roller don't use a cloth or um what's the other kind of roller is that fuzzy kind what, what is it just a roller anyways don't use that kind use the foam kind Gives it that really good wispy look. Like it's like done. <laughs> it could be. It could absolutely be done right now. <clears throat> Let's keep this out. Mm -hmm. um, Just lay that right there. Need more white. All right, many of you asked if we mix resin into this. It's not, it's just pure spray paint. We spray it into the cup. There is a big piece of hair right there. Oh, this is why I say Use heat with parental supervision. See my new knot tattoo? It's from the fire end of a heat gun. So you can see that. Mm hmm Matches. It's perfect. Matches that. <laughs> and I laugh with love, people. I laugh with love. But does he? But do he?
Are the people still in there? People. Yeah. All right. If it looks like this, see how it's got a little bit of chunks in it? I don't know if you guys can see it. It looks a little bit gritty. No bueno. It won't pour right. Swarovski crystals. Just blinging for a baby bed. Baby bed. That is beautiful. I love it. Love it. Wait till you guys see this sink. It's kind of amazing. All right, this is a little, uh, <laughs> a warning. To everybody that uses a heat gun you see this do not touch your skin to it or it looks like this <laughs> yep she is trying to start a new trend I think it's like a tattoo but not a tattoo if you're a true resin artist you will definitely get this is the a scarification mark. there mark you go the resin artist <laughs> <laughs> Parental supervision. Parental supervision. Watch it. This is going to be not fun. That is not coming off. We just got layer one done today. We'll be posting. Babe, where are we going? Um, we're gonna go to the diner to get cocktails and bakery. <laughs> cocktails and bakery. Looks like a pretty cool spot. Let's cheeky cheeky check it out. Snow. Okay, but are you ready to get hit by No, because if, an if ice you ball? hit me with that and all that dirt gets on me, just like on your hands. Yep. And it's it super nice out today. <laughs> and there's snow on the ground. <laughs> I have my jacket in my hands. And we just came from that diner don't and eat there. don't eat there. <laughs> if you're in Frederick, Maryland, do not eat at Double T Diner. It is, it was really bad. We're gonna walk over to Chick-fil-A. Good old staple. Old reliable. 
With their line with around. With their line. Whether well, we're not in a car. Yellow. Not bueno. It's just, we love it. Well, that's why I was um, telling my mom and dad about it. Because my dad is a fighter. I can't believe that um, they actually were like, we're here to do it. And I said, what's so amazing and so awesome is that you guys love what you do. You enjoy it. All right, so we're sanding... We're sanding it for the second coat, but we have to extra sand it because of the, uh, we put actual gold leaf in it. You can feel it, it's lumpy. Um, so what you want to do is sand it with the 220, sand it all down, and then you'll be able to see where it's kind of shiny and you can feel it if it's raised. So that way you know where you have to take this, the coarse, this is very coarse. Um, this is 120. Um, it's very coarse. And what you do, take it, fold it up into little, uh, little, little parts that you're not using this whole thing and scratching up stuff you don't really need to. So fold it to a little piece so it's nice and flat. And just wherever you feel it, just give it some good pressure. Try to stay in this area. Do it in a couple different directions. Now this doesn't just scrape all the gold leaf off since a lot of it's on the top layer? No, it just, it just hits whatever is... Too high? Whatever's too high because we poured that resin over it. Gotcha. Remember? Um... And it knocks it down. And even if it does, it's, I mean, you can still see it. It's shiny. These are, these are dipped in. That's why that sandpaper didn't take it off. So that's not a problem because the resin will fill all that. There's still some that are kind of raised, but. The top coat will not. Yeah, th this, 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 this is actually flush. It's just, you, you can feel the underneath. Because if it wasn't, all that shiny would be taken off. So that's why when we were laying it out the first time, we covered it in clear resin. So then you take this, take the 220. You can use 220, you can use 300, whatever's in your hardware store. Um, this is a, a nice, this is something to start off something to sand with if you're trying to sand something that you don't want big grooves in, especially with uh, resin. And then you just sand where you sand. You can feel it as you sand it, it, how it was coarse. And as you sand it, it gets smoother. And there you go. Now it's You're ready. You're just gonna go into coat. your other spots that are, that's a little high. So you just stay in your little area. Try to do it in different directions. So you're not carving, you're not carving big craters in there. You just kind of do it in a circle if you can. It doesn't take much right there. Yeah. And that is flush. Perfect. So now we're going to do that over all the high points. So it's ready for a second coat. So what we're doing is we're adding more gold leaf uh, to the second coat, but we want to put it on before so it doesn't float to the top and you'll be able to feel it, feel it, fill it, whatever. Um, so what she's doing is she sprayed um, some Elmer's adhesive spray. Any spray adhesive will Any do. Any spray adhesive will do. Just something sticky. Uh, and kind of just lay it down in the direction that you want it. I don't know if you, you can see, see it. it. I don't know if you can really see it, but she just kind of put it on there and, and just went along with 
the pink. We're not gonna cover it, but we're just gonna kind of make it so it goes with it. So it looks very Concrete. cohesive and natural. What you do is just get your loose. We got a bag. It's just basically crushed gold leaf. And there's a lot in here. Like you could, we could have this for We've had a good that. six months to a year. Um, and we use it quite frequently. And just lay it down over the adhesive. And if you want, you could put it down I wouldn't. And just kind of rub your hand over it a little while it's still kind of wet. So then the, the adhesive gets on your fingers. Then it picks up the excess gold leaf. And it'll spread it to the other parts of the uh, adhesive that you have down. It's and it, and it kind of makes it now. fade a little bit. But I you could wait a good 5-10 minutes. Yeah, right now it's too, it's, too if, tacky. If it's too tacky, it'll come up. So... You can wait a little bit. We usually lay the whole project and then we'll go back and do that part. Yeah, you can use like a light uh, brush or, or a light rag. You don't want to, you don't want to press on it because then you'll, Spray you'll put marks up. into the uh, gold leaf and it'll, it'll dole it out and it possibly could scrape it up, but more or less dole it out. See, so here's one piece that, that we did where we laid the adhesive down and then put it on and just kind of wiped over it. Like this, she had just done this piece, so what we could do is just wipe it off. Just gently drag your finger, see the excess comes off. Just gently drag your hand over it. There you go. You could do this under the first layer if you wanted to, if you wanted to be exact with your gold placement, but this, the kind of look we're going for isn't supposed to look, what's the word? Um, we want it to look natural and random. Intentional. We don't want it to look, yeah. And I was going to show you this faucet. I don't even know. Never seen a faucet like that. Kind of amazing. There's a piece down here that um, you guys have to see. It's really well done. Oh. I think later on today, guys, tonight, I think we're gonna go right over there. Get our crab on. And get our crab on. Apparently Baltimore is known crab for crab culture. Mm -hmm. And heroin. <laughs> Fun, fact. Fun fact. Time for the top coat. Now, I know that there's like calculations for the measurement, but um, it just never turns out to be the amount that we calculated. So we just mix what we think it'll take and we usually have to add more, but that's fine. For this, we're starting out with 16 ounces. For our top coat. We got some resin yesterday that turned out to be yellow, so we went and got another batch of resin that was the clearest one we had, we could find. We have the wall masked off, sink masked off, swan masked off, and under. Under the table. Under the table masked off. All that's new masking because we took the original off yesterday. We need to do that within two hours so that it's the easiest removed. And it gives it, it lets the resin set 
enough to where when you pull the tape off, it'll, it'll look like you're pulling the resin out, but it'll just come right back and settle in, like, because it's not all the way settled. So that's, it, it, it'll let it settle back into the wall or into the sink, and it'll just be really nice and smooth. So if you leave the tape on there, you're going to have to cut it. And there's always edges and tape sticks and the and the resin sticks to the tape and it just looks trashy it just looks terrible so you'll have a mess if you let that tape sit so easiest just take it off within one to two hours after you initially lay it we left all of the floor masking on from yesterday because why not and we figured out when you're pouring and there's you're bound to get drips on the floor randomly. And your, your feet touch it, it's gonna stick. It's gonna stick to the paper, it's gonna stick to the plastic. You're gonna pull this up, you're gonna track it everywhere. So what she figured out is just take your shoes and your socks off, or you can keep your socks on, and just make it to where the plastic goes underneath your foot. And yeah. just put, put your feet underneath there and just move accordingly. And there you go. Pro tip number, today we're just giving we all the secrets pro tip Saturdays that's what we should do is just wait and just make videos of all the pro tips you know and just piss the other resin people off and tell them all the secrets all the secrets <laughs> I'm sure they're already irritated with us because we post full images for our like videos gee I'm gonna have to bleep that word out for all the children. Clear? Yeah. All right, let's get to it. So as usual, script the sides, the bottom, the stick, all the things. <clears throat> I'm in timeout from the heat gun. Exhibit A. Popping all the air bubbles and warming up resin makes it a lot more fluid, easier to move around. You don't necessarily want to pour it all the way to the edge yet because then you're just going to lose epoxy. And doing this will warm it up to where you can you can manage it. You can you can you can make it go to the edge and just hold off until you the very end and then work it around the edges. This is why we don't want to push to the edge too soon. Cause since one drop went over It'll follow itself, but it had to happen eventually. We just prefer to wait to the end so that everything on the counter is covered first. That's the good thing about this stuff is it's self-leveling, so it'll find its way to air bubbles. Yeah. But those will come out when we hit it with the heat gun again. Alright, so we're taking the tape off, and it's best to uh, wait an hour or so, two hours. Well, I would say about two hours, a little longer. Um, heat it up with the heat gun so that it gets it a little loose, and you want to try to take it off from the direction that you put it that you put it on like pretty much backwards so you see those drips are just coming right off
I know, mine are, mine's like stuck. <laughs> mine's gonna probably rip. <laughs> there we go. That's it. Be good and clean. Yep. No bumps. And go into the other one. Look at this. Look at this. You want to start in the opposite way when you laid it down so that the tape that's laid over itself comes off with the perfect with the other tape. We're good. Those edges are amazing. Clean Look at that. Okay, I'm scared. I googled it, right? I, I did the research and it said to, to pull this out. I don't know what the technical term for this is. I'm scared. Uh, okay. Then you have to. So, what are you thinking? I'm thinking I'm scared. Oh, is this your first one? Yeah. No. Okay. You got it. Oh my god. The seasoning's good. <laughs> so, pull all that out. Pull it out? So, like. You just have to, like. So, don't. Yeah, those are long, so you don't eat those. Those are long? Yeah, those are crab longs. And you want to scrape, like put your knife like right in the middle of there afterwards. And just, scrape it? Yep, scrape it down. This is Krabby 101. Oh my god, okay, you ready? You got it. No, oh, I'm not ready. It's all it's intestines. Oh my god. Ugh. Sorry. Look at that. There you go. And then here you go. Mustard. I just dropped your crab cake on the floor. Oh, no. It just adds flavor. <laughs> There's your crab cake. Zoom in on the action. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to get you another one. Oh my God. You can wipe it out with a napkin. Yeah, there you go. Okay, and then you just break it in half. Okay. I think it got in my eye. What? What's this yellow goo? It's mustard, but I won't tell you what it is because you might turn away from it. Yeah, we know what it's it is. It's mustard. Yeah. It's honey mustard. It's Dijon. It's gray poupon. And then, you just eat it regularly. Then you just eat it regularly. It's like good, but I'm scared about the yellow. Cheers. It's crabby. Ow, ow. It got me. Steve got me.